So first, I wanted to begin with what exactly are data views. So a data view is basically a client-side abstraction of data from the server-side data set or BAQ results. It, serve as a, it serves as a primary unit of data binding within, again, Kinetic Application Studio. And there's going to be two um, types of data views that we'll be talking about. And we have standard slash system, which are the Epicor made ones. And then um, I'm going to also present on extended data views next week, which are user made ones. And that one's going to be a lot more in depth on making them. But today I'm only going to talk about the ones that Epicor has already made for us. So we just have a general understanding of what exactly they are and what they do. The purpose of these data views, it allows the user to create, again, user defined representation of data and allows data bindings, which is very useful in Application Studio when you're trying to make those customizations. And the benefits that we have is that it's reusable. So once you define the data view, they can be, re they can be reused across the different forms and app for different bindings across them. And they are dynamic. So they update in real time as the user inputs changes or the server data is reloaded. And they are low code friendly, which is everybody's favorite part that makes it simpler for the user. A common use case for the standard data views is that you can just display the form data and you can show the real-time ERP data in grids, panels, or cards. So this is just an example of the sales order page. When you open it, the way that you can see all of the data, the order, order date, PO, all of that information is coming from either a BAQ or a table that's in the system. So this is just one of the ways that I'm sure you've seen data displayed. So that's what the data view is doing. It's grabbing that data for you and we're able to display that here. And then we can also, it's also used for binding controls to live data. So it connects controls like text boxes or drop downs to ERP fields. We're in the customer page right here. And when you type in the customer you want, it uses the data view to essentially like link it and then pull out the information that you want, depending on what you typed in and everything. Trigger conditions, so they drive rules or events based on the, the data view values. So here um, in our data rules in Application Studio, I don't know if you've ever done them before, you know that you have to choose the data view, the field, and then you choose what you want the value to be, and then that'll trigger something else, either a rule or you could use them in events as well. Um, well, not the data rules. Yes, yeah, so they're very useful in all those different scenarios. Now I can begin talking about where we find these data views. So again, like when you open um, Application Studio, you go into your layer and then this is again the customer page so it'll open and it'll look like this and on the left side all the way over here this little highlighted grid is going to be the data view section and once you open it it looks like this and it's going to show you all of the data views that are already there today we're unfortunately not going to go over how to make one yourself because i'm going to go over the ones that are already here that Epicor has made for us. Um, but I will be going over that next week in my extended data view presentation. But today I'm just gonna hop into this contact data view so I can show you what it looks like if you've never been able to see one before. So when you go in here, um, each of the previous data views that you saw are gonna be um, specific to the form you're in. So this one is the contact one because we're in the customer page. So when you go to different forms, you're going to have different ones. And next, I will be talking about the system-wide ones that we have. But this is just, I mean, it, it also can be across different forms, but some are just specific to the certain forms. So we have contact and customer, and this is what it looks like. You just have all these little boxes where you just put in information. And again, I'm going to be going into, into depth, into each section here next week. I have the presentation ready. So that's gonna be when we create our own, but I just wanted to do to see the idea of what it looks like. Um, here we have all of the columns and the values and everything. That was an example of one of the standard form data views. Again, it's automatically included based on the business object of the form that you're in. So all of these, again, are gonna be a part of the customer form because they're all tables that connect to, again, customer, customer entry and all that stuff. 
And then, like I said, we have our system data views, which are going to be available globally. And these are available across all of the forms because not all of them are going to have data right away. They're more like blank ones. So that way you could store in your data or they get filled in as you're doing things in the form itself. So again, here I have the data view names on the left side and the descriptions on the right. So TransView is used to store temporary session variables key field, hold key, hold key field values. So again, these are more so like temporary tables that are used all across all the forms. And then I skipped over my little note back there, but I wanted to note that many system data views are not going to be visible in that data view section that I had showed you where all of the other ones were but they're still going to be accessible in rules and events only because when you pull them open like this, again, they're most likely going to be blank because they just get filled in as you're working on the form. So you can see the trans view in the data view panel, but when you open it, it appears empty because it's a blank container, sort of just temporary memory space, and it doesn't connect to a database table or a server table like the other ones did. So instead, you're creating and populating the fields dynamically through events, rules, or scripts. If you're looking at the chart that I had before, and then you try to find it in that data view section, um, there was a few that were not in there. So I know TransView was, that's how, how was, I was able to pull it up. But again, it comes up empty just because it's more of just a temporary space that you can add stuff in. A few takeaways. <laughs> The, data, the standard data view is going to be the client-sided data views for displaying and interacting with the ERP data. And it is the standard ones are auto-loaded from the form's business objects based on the forms, unless they're the global ones. And why? Because it's low code and helps with bindings and logic. So again, no custom code is needed. And they're very useful in displaying data across grids and forms, binding controls driving rules, filters, and events, and using system views for your own temporary storage is very useful. And again, this was just a very general little presentation next week on the extended data view ones. I will be going into depth on making your own data view and how we actually bring that in, how we bring in the data using events or using the different types of ways that we are allowed to bring in data. So that's all I have for today. But join me next week for more in-depth tutorial on all of that. Okay.